Good evening. Hi, this is Emery Christie with A1R Psychic Radio. Welcome to Messages, Magic, and Musings, episode number four. So thanks again for joining me tonight. We've got a few things happening tonight. We'll be taking a couple of callers, of course, but I'm going to start by just uh, sharing with you a card that I drew. Uh, I felt that I would draw a card for the collective today. If you are at all like me, the last week, few weeks have been full of a lot of ups and downs for you, uh, a lot of um, challenges, I suppose, on an emotional level, old things, new things, whatever. And uh, I, I just wanted to start by bringing us a little bit of uh, a message for all of us. So I drew a card for us. I haven't looked at it yet. It's from the Moonology deck. Moonology Oracle Cards. Now, this is a beautiful deck. This is from Yasmin Boland. So, the top card is for us. Mm, this is one that we all need. In a time that so many of us are, are curious about what's happening, we're feeling challenged financially, as far as our patience goes, in, in so many different ways with everything around the pandemic happening. Uh, where where I live, there are a lot of changes happening in Canada as far as restrictions and things go. And uh, for a lot of people, it's another wave of layoffs and things. This card is New Moon in Taurus, and the message is prosperity lies ahead. So that's excellent. I had a few people earlier today on a live that were asking me just about that very thing. So I'm just going to read us the message before we progress with the rest of what we're doing today. So this book, the one little thing about this book is that it is not a book where things are just in order nicely. And so it takes a little bit maybe to find what it is that you're looking for. So prosperity lies ahead. This is a message for the collective. This card will often come up when you're inquiring about a financial matter or when you're doubting your self-worth. This card suggests you can have what you want, including material things, but you must believe in yourself. This comes down to the laws of attraction. Value yourself and others will value you too. You can create abundance. Taurus is associated with luxurious Venus and this card holds the new moon energy. So now is a good time to make a 12 month financial plan. While you're at it, perhaps set some goals outside of finances as well. This card can also signal the start of a new relationship or of sexier times. If you've been wrestling with something for a long time, the new moon in sturdy Taurus is a sign not to give up just yet. So additional meanings, you will soon be able to afford the things you're dreaming of. Additional meaning as well, getting clear on what you value most will help you find peace taking some time out to pamper yourself is advisable. Start a standing order to a savings account, no matter how small. So much needed me message and guidance for so many of us today. So as luck would have it, uh, I personally have um, a strong connection to rabbit, which is a super um, huge sign of abundance. A lot of people associate rabbit with luck. Rabbit is a lot about intuition and quick movement, um, taking advantage of situations moving quickly. It is also uh, um, a guide of those that push themselves really hard and then perhaps just like to take a rest and then push themselves really super hard and then take a rest. And for any of you that know me, that's kind of how I flow. There's no nine to five here and I wouldn't want it. So I just wanted to show you these for anyone that can see my lucky rabbit's foot from when I was about six years old. I've always had an obsession with rabbits. It's kind of morbid to have a rabbit's foot these days. I wouldn't go out and buy one, but childhood. And then a lovely little rabbit token, a little hard to see with the light there. But again, a little symbol a beautiful crystal, something to bring prosperity. So I saw that we have a caller and I would love to connect with that caller. Wendy, are you there? I am here, yes. Hi, Wendy. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Where are you calling from today? I'm calling from Toronto, West Virginia. Wonderful. And how can I help you today, Wendy? 
Well, I have a few questions. Okay. Um, so, my children and I have been estranged for over eight years. So, okay. my first question is, will I be reunited with my children by the end of this year? Okay, so before you offer any other questions, I just want to take a quick peek at your energy and then I'm going to ask you for a couple of names in just a moment, okay? Okay. Okay, so Wendy, I'm just going to make a couple of comments about your energy, okay? Uh, just a couple of quick observations. The first thing that came up is you really do have a very big heart, you know, and of course I know you have love for your children, but you really do have a very big heart, a very tender heart. And I don't know if you've ever read about what it is to be an empath, but if you haven't, I would look at that, okay? You're, you're very sensitive to other people's feelings and emotions, but to add to that, I'm shown that um, out through a sensation, actually, that you have, um, it's like a jittery feeling to your energy. I would liken it to a sense of anxiety. And with this, not all anxiety comes out with like feeling of crushing pain and panic and all sorts of things like that. Sometimes it's almost more obvious in the way we are maybe micromanaging or really particular about certain things or, um, you know, hyper vigilant about other things. Does that sound familiar to you? It does, yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I just wanted to acknowledge that. I think it was really important um, that those things were acknowledged because what I was picking up on was almost a sense, I, I haven't looked at your child, like, you know, the energy around your children and your relationships with them yet, but because uh, that came up, it, it was almost a sense like... <sighs> There's some pieces of your your anxiety and the way that it's shown up um, might be a little bit part of the push or the challenge around those relationships, okay? And, and not to say that there's not lo a lot of things that come into play as far as the dynamics there, but it was just a little something for you to look at for yourself. Okay. dynamic with your children is the only thing that's bringing a sense of of anxiety for you so i just wanted to to mention that now how many children do you have three three okay now i'm not going to ask you for their names because they're living uh, i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to ask you for first initials if i may okay so you can start with the, the oldest one, one is N. Okay. And then the second one? A. Okay, and the third? B. All right. And are you currently estranged from all three? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to start with N. I believe you said N as in Nancy? Yes. Okay. And is N male or female, may I ask? He's male. Okay. Okay. The first thing that comes around N, and please know I'm not reading uh, your children. I'm more just feeling out the energy around your relationship. The first thing that comes around N is that he's very headstrong. Okay. Headstrong, uh, to me, I would connect that maybe to a sense of stubbornness uh, or, you know, there's one way of looking at things and only one way. Okay. So possibly very opinionated whether he really is vocal about them or not okay does this sound familiar to you it does yes okay so i just like to tap on it on the energy get a little clarity and then i'm going to see what i find around that relationship for you okay you know with this child it, it's almost a sense of feeling like you're not even sure what you need to do to be able to reunify this. I feel like there's been no communication. It's just been almost like a cut off. Is that correct? Yes, it has. It has. Okay. So it, it leaves me with this sense of if I'm in your shoes, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know where to start. Okay. Um, it, I do get energy around reunification. I 
currently don't foresee it happening likely in the next year. Now, that doesn't mean 100% that it can't happen. Right now, though, there's not energy supporting it, okay? Which means that if, if we're leaving it up to N, there's likely not a plan or an intent or an openness with him currently. Something could shift, but right now it's not showing up, okay? But I do see reunification for you in the future. I just don't know at what point, okay? Okay. So now the middle child, A, now is A male or female? Female. Okay, that's what I was thinking. All right, so just one moment. Okay. Now, A feels a lot more verbal, far more verbal. Now, I, I'm gathering with A, there was more uh, conversation or dialogue or almost verbalization around what the discontent was, what the issue was here. Uh, I, I get a sense of almost like volatility, though, around A. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes, it does. Okay. So let's just see now. You know, I, I'm being told that she's got a lot of anger, that there's a lot of misplaced anger as well. Okay. So there's this sense of, there are some things that, you know, perhaps need to be healed and addressed that you know, may have to do with your relationship with her. But then I feel like there's outside things that it's almost like you're being blamed for as well. And until there's an ability to have a conversation, to be able to navigate those things, it's really challenging for her to be able to see things perhaps from a different point of view. It might take the help of a counselor, a professional to be able to navigate that, okay? I hope that she doesn't yeah. hang on to that anger because, of course, it's not going to get her anywhere. But it's really important to note that, you know, we've got to feel things. We've got to express it. We've got to let it out. But after that, it's mm -hmm. ours to heal. And, and anger is just the face of hurt, right? So she's got a lot of hurt to work through. But I think you'll agree that there's a lot of things being directed at you that aren't necessarily done by your hand or things that you are fully accountable for. Sometimes the the challenge of of being mom, of being, you know, that present parent it, that I suppose sometimes, you know, we're accessible and therefore sometimes we do end up paying the price because we're accessible, right? So with that relationship, I just see her going back and forth, but still venting anger. Uh, let's see. How many children does she have? One. Okay, because I can see a little one around her and likely she'll have at least another one, possibly two, okay? Um, with her... Unlike your first child, does A pick up the phone sometimes and call you just to vent and then she gets off the phone and then it's like cut off again and we just redo this over and over? No, um, we see each other at random places. Okay. We talk to each other, and then the, the ties are cut off then until we see each other again. Okay. And so when you do interact in person, it's fairly cordial. It's just that it's very surface. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. What I saw was a vision of her sitting on her couch, and, and it was like reaching over for her phone wanting to call you, picking up her phone. I just didn't know she felt followed through on it at those times. So, but it, it shows a, a, a desire to talk, but then she kind of talks herself off the ledge. I got the feeling though, sometimes when she's thinking about calling, it's to have an emotional outlet, to have a vent. It might not all be anger, but she's got a lot to work through. I get the sense that you are going to have reunification. Let me just see about timelines, if there's anything that shows up here. Okay. It feels to me as though there will be some shift in that relationship, probably around a year. It feels like it's probably going to take place in 2022, okay? Okay. You might find it might also coincide with another grandchild born to her. A child born to her, okay. your grandchild. Okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So now your last child, and forgive me, what was the last initial? B. Okay, B. And B is, is that male? It's a female. Female, okay. So B. Okay, with B, there's a sense of practicing avoidance, not in the same way that your son does. Your son just, you know, he's just streamlined in whatever his focus, his frame of mind is, and, and just shut everything out. B feels a little bit more like she wants to avoid conflict. She wants to avoid discomforting conversations, situations, and so she's just not, okay? So mm -hmm. it, it's a very different energy with her. Mm-hmm. With her, just so you know, there's a sense of not feeling heard, not feeling understood, okay? And and okay. it's not always easy to see eye to eye, obviously, uh, but that's what comes out. And sometimes even when people do talk, they just don't feel like they're really understood. Other times they don't feel heard or understood because they've been holding it all in and, and they don't feel like they have the capacity to truly communicate that. With her... Would you be surprised if I told you that it seems to me that she is the most likely to have a unification with you in a shorter period of time? That would be surprising. Okay. There's something in there, my dear. She honestly has a real tenderness to her. There's a real sadness. It doesn't mean that she's good at showing and expressing it, but... Mm -hmm. There, there's just such a vulnerable need to her, even when she's not willing to put her heart on her sleeve. I want you to just watch how things shift around three months. It, it, and I want you to put out some intentions around your relationships in that time, okay? And, and see what unfolds. And if you feel like there's an open door to that relationship or, or you know, a little white flag that you can put out, Hey, just wanted you to know I was thinking about you. You know, I, I'm here when you're ready. That might be beneficial, mm -hmm. but the energy shifts and changes around that relationship in about three months. So I hope that will bring you uh, the connection you're looking for. Well, thank you very much. Yes, that helps. You're, you're so very welcome. It was wonderful to connect with you and thank you so much. Take care. Yes. And I'm ready for Indonesia. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How can I help you tonight? Um, I have a question regarding my ex-boyfriend. Okay. Um, my question is, does he plan on proposing to me? Okay. So I'm just going to take a moment. I'm going to tap on your energy. I'll tell you a couple of observations for you. Then I'm going to take his initial. And then I will answer your question. Okay. Okay, quick observation. You're very, very visual. Are you involved in like arts, artistic display, things like that, really big into aesthetics or home decoration or crafting? Yes. Okay, so you have such a strong energy around visual strength, and this actually connects into the psychic sense of clairvoyance, so the ability to see energy. Do you recognize that about yourself? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So I'm taken there by a physical sensation, but it always connects to your strength in the physical world. It's never just about your psychic senses, okay? So one always highlights the other. Where our strengths are in the physical highlights our strengths psychically, where our challenges are 
in the physical also sometimes indicates where our strengths are psychically. So that came up for you, the ability to see energy. And there was an indication on your forehead tells me you're a very logical, practical minded person. You're very much a thinker. You are somebody who is likely to ask questions, do your research, think things through, less inclined towards, you know, the um, just make a decision and just fly with it. So less on the impulsive side. It tells me though that you have a psychic sense of knowing. So you're somebody who just knows things and the word is clear cognizant. So when uh, you might have moments that you seem to feel as though you uh, just know something, you, you might recognize that you're receiving a message, but on the other hand, you might also just think it's a coincidence or something you heard before, but you do have, you do have that gift. Okay. So now the ex-boyfriend, what is his, what is his um, initial please? K and B. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so there's ongoing connection between the two of you, correct? That's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it shows ongoing connection, doesn't feel at all like we're disconnected. I, I feel like even though you're not considering yourself together, there is still a lot of intimate connection happening here. Now, that doesn't always mean it's sexual. It, it means it's in a way that you're you're expressing, you know, care, concern, you're, you're very close. There is a real sense of closeness here. Um, how long ago did the two of you part ways? Um, we parted ways October 2019, but I just reached out to him again, um, late February of this month, I mean, of this year. Okay. Okay. And since then, it's been very regular conversation, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just feels like you just picked up where it left off in some way. So that's interesting. Now let's take a moment here. So this shows as one of those kind of relationships where when it ended, neither of you stopped thinking about each other. It was very hard for each of you to move on. And, you know, when I see him, it's like he's holding his chest like this was just like, oh, it almost eat, ate up. Um, ate him up inside, just something that just kind of really stirred up emotions, not always necessarily sadness and, and, and lovesick, but just like it just got to him almost in an irritating way, like he was mad at himself that he was so hung up on you. Does that sound like anything he shared with you? Um, no, he didn't tell me that. Okay. Well, that's what I'm getting. So maybe that's his secret. So the two of you... So you're both a little older, a little wiser. You're both very clear on what it is that you're wanting, what you're looking for. I, I feel like that is um, a bit of a shift of growth for each of you. Now, it does seem like you're fairly aligned in what it is that you want going forward. Now, the question is whether it's together or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. To me, this feels like a relationship where there was a lot of love. There really, truly was. And, you know, with the limited um, energy that I have around his initials, I don't feel like there were any huge red flags around this relationship. And what I'm getting is, is that if this is something that both of you are willing to explore, I know some people believe that why go down a path you've already been down? What's the purpose in that? But sometimes timing does make a difference. And to me, this looks like something that's worth exploring. Now, whether he will propose or not has a lot to do with choices that are made leading up to that, how the two of you choose to progress, including what kind of conversations you have, the effort made, all sorts of things, statement of intentions. Um, with this, there is energy around it. I can't tell you for sure it's going to happen, but there's energy around it. So it seems the two of you are both mindful about looking for a um, committed relationship. I feel like each of you are likely in a mindset that's a little bit more on the family-minded side, uh, especially him. 
for whatever reason, I, I felt like he'd been considering children and things like that. And there's just this sense of, of connection, like it would just be so easy just to fall back together and, and proceed in a way that we could just move forward and, and get on with life in a sense, right? And be able to work towards goals together and things. Mm -hmm. This just feels like falling all over in love again. And it just feels like it happened so quickly. So I, I feel that there's energy around proposal here. I know that nothing's a guarantee, but if that's really what you want, I want you to think about how to navigate that because any, anything that we receive is, is one part, you know, the energy around it and one part our our own action and, and our own intention. And because he has free will as well, you know, he does have a say mm -hmm. in how things unfold, but there does seem to be energy around it. I feel like he's just falling hard into this just as quickly as you are. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Have the two of you had any conversations about getting back together, dating again, those kinds of things? Um, well, we said that we were, you know, trying to build a stronger foundation now and keeping sex out of it at the moment. Yep. And that's probably not a bad idea. Reconnect and ensure that you're on the same page. Have those conversations now before you get really invested, you know, about what you want in the future, where your mind's at, all sorts of things like that, okay? Mm -hmm. But there, there does seem to be a lot of energy around it. I just feel like you've come back to this in a different mindset, and I think it's a good one. Okay. So yeah, that thank sense. you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic night. And best of luck to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. you too. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <sighs> All right. So, thank you both for the amazing calls. And I certainly look forward to next week. Next week... I'm hoping to have a guest on with me. So I will be doing a live on my page, Emery Christie Psychic Medium on Facebook. Before then, if you would like to hear a little bit more about what I've got planned for upcoming shows, I'd love for you to connect with me there. And as always, if you're looking for guidance or reading or even uh, some learning as far as workshops go, please check out my offerings on my page or send me a message.